Hello and welcome back. This is Elle with The Stitching Field. How are you? Did you have a good month last month? If you celebrated Thanksgiving, I hope you had as great a time as I did. I've got a lot to show you here, but first I want to tell you a story that I think will make you laugh. Every Thanksgiving, or the day before Thanksgiving, we take a trip and we go visit the store that has this amazing Christmas display. And every year they change it up. And this year we went and we saw the trees and then we went and saw Santa. And last year they didn't have Santa because of COVID. This year they have Santa, but if you're uncomfortable with your children sitting on his lap, they have a bench about a foot or so in front of him. And the kids can sit there and talk to Santa. So my grandchildren are seven and 10. My granddaughter's the oldest. And we knew she was going to ask Santa for yarn because a couple weeks ago she asked me to teach her how to crochet she caught on real quickly and she did well. So now she's crocheting like crazy and she wants yarn. Okay, I'm sure Santa's heard crazy things. That's probably unique for him. But then it came time for my grandson and I'm gonna put a picture in of his face where my grandson asked him for a rubber chicken. This is probably the first he's ever heard that one. So, okay, afterwards we asked him, why did you ask Santa for a rubber chicken? We've never heard him mention a rubber chicken before. And his answer was simple because it makes me laugh. Okay. Thanksgiving, I had dinner with them and I always give the grandchildren their ornaments. If you're new here, I make an ornament every year for my grandchildren for their tree. So I gave my granddaughter her dachshund. This is what the dachshund looked like before I filled it. So I gave her that. And she was excited. She loved it. Okay. So then I gave my grandson his. And I gave it to him upside down in his hand. And he turned it over. And his eyes got big. And you could see a smile start to form. And then he burst into a huge smile, leaped in my arms and gave me a hug. A little while later, something was said about where his ornament was. And here he put it in his bed so he could sleep with it. He was that happy with it. That's why I make these ornaments. So we had a lovely Thanksgiving. We, my da daughter-in-law is a great cook. So we had a lovely dinner. My grandson put on an, a magic show for us. My granddaughter exhibited her, her yoga skills and showed us all her moves. It was a great time. I think the only thing that could have been better for my son would have been if his team had won the football game. Okay, so cross-stitch, that's what you're here for. So, I had a finish. Oh, wait, before we do the finish, let me do the giveaway. So I offered a giveaway in my whip parade as a thank you to everyone for supporting me for the past year. And I'll put a picture in here. The winner is Patricia Tavik. And Patricia, I will leave a comment on your comment and I will leave my email and my Instagram below so you can reach me whichever way is most convenient. So thank you for everyone who participated. It was lovely hearing everything you were thankful for. Okay, let's go into the finish. So as you know, I was working on Stevie Ray. And this is Stevie Ray. The artist is Wendy Kathleen. And all I had left to do was this guitar. And I did it. There was 11,614 stitches. And... I'm filming on my phone today because my iPad is full. I filmed yesterday on the iPad and let's just say this morning I was only at 0% on YouTube and I, after hours of working with this, I gave up and I'm filming again. So that's why we're a day late. So anyway, I'm going to put a picture in here of the full picture so you can see Stevie. And then we're going to talk a little bit about this. Okay, so first of all, Stevie is stitched on a light blue or pale blue Mystery Ada. And I did this because there was a lot of white and I don't like to stitch white on white. Okay, so speaking of white on white, over here you can see the white. And yeah, it's showing up a little bit more here, but you can see columns in the white. And that's because there was so much white that I didn't stitch cross country within my hoop like I do for all the rest of the areas. So you can see up here, there's no lines up here because I was stitching cross country. Okay. 
I love this design and I, it's going on the wall right behind you. And I'm thankful that I did it, but I won't say this was always my favorite piece to stitch because of all this white. This design has 86,800 stitches and 30,000 plus was 3865. And we're not even talking, this is blends of different whites. This is just 3865. So yeah, there was a lot of white stitching. Now, the other thing I want to say about this, oops, this side, is I've heard people say, you know, your heaven earth designs look, or your full coverage designs look good from afar, but not necessarily up close. And this is the first time that I will actually say I agree with that. Can you see all that pixelation in the headstock? And if you come over here, you can see it in his hand, but you pull it back and it works and it looks good. So yes, I'm very happy and I'm thrilled this is done and I can't wait to get the frame for this. Look at that guitar. Um, one other note that I found on this, I use the friction pens to grid. I've been doing this for a few months now and I've heard people say that they're concerned that if the, if the piece becomes cold, the lines will reappear. And I never gave that much thought. When I washed this, I put this in hot water with a little bit of detergent and some oxy bleach or oxy, oxy clean, whatever you call it. And the lines disappeared in the hot water. I thought, oh, cool. I don't have to worry about ironing it to make them disappear, which I always iron after I'm done. But when I rinsed it, I usually rinse in lukewarm water. And for whatever reason, I just did cold. And as soon as I immersed this in the cold water and it was this white that I noticed first, because you can see through it, all those lines reappeared. Um, they disappeared again when I pressed it. So I would say if you are concerned about that possibility, that yes, it is a possibility that with extreme cold, those lines can return. Okay, so let's get on to other stitching. So my first one was my 100 stitches a day, which is kind of funny because yeah, I didn't make 100 stitches a day. I was so intent on Stevie Ray that I fell behind on this. So this is Mini Dia de Mortos by Alexander V. Bach. And I did 1,680 stitches, which as you can tell, 100 stitches a day would have given me 3,000. I have five stitches. There's two down here and three up here that are not complete on page one, just because I don't have that color right now. So I moved on to page two and got this started. And I'll bring this in so you can see these colors. Yeah, I'm stitching this on a 14 count. No, I'm not. I'm stitching this on a 16 count. Um, country French, I believe, or it's French country. This is by Witchell and the color is rain. And I did that because all this black, if it's not, if the coverage isn't perfect, you won't see it as much, the fabric as much as you would on white. And then there's a lot of white in her face and I don't like to stitch white on white. So either way, this was a good choice. And this is just lovely. I, I really enjoy this. I don't know if I'll get back to this this month. I have interesting plans for this month, but let's move on. Okay, my next one was my free dragonfly. And this comes from Cyber Stitchers. And you know, I was pulling out one of the colors I was using and replacing it. So I finished this upper wing. I pulled out all the threads that were up here and the threads down here. I've put in this whole wing and now I'm working on the upper wing. So that's where that is. Now colors I'm using for the body. I'm using Victoria Motto Sample Shops Flow Blue Light. And it says on here DMC conversion. No, it doesn't. It says dye lot is number 13. Um, so let's see if you can see the variegation in this. I'm not sure how that's showing up. Okay, so that's that. And then I'm using a Country Garden thread. And this is 
cypress, blue cypress or cypress something. So that's the thread I'm using. This phone just does not. Now I had been using another cottage garden thread. And the reason I picked this was that this light color matches one of the light colors in here. And my phone just doesn't focus as well. Anyway, I thought these would be great compliments to get shading in the wings, but that dark and that second thread was just too dark. So that's why I pulled it out and I'm just doing it in the one thread. This is a variegated, but as you can see, but I'm not doing one stitch at a time. I'm doing, I'm going up and down and just doing half a leg and then coming back and doing the other half to give it a more subtle vari vari variegation. <laughs> okay, so then I moved on and this next one is Alice in Snow White by Jasmine Beckett Griffith, oh, fabric. This is on a 18 count picture this plus and the color is either icon or jade. Um, I bought this before I started doing floss tube and I didn't save the name. So I went online and looked and in some pictures this looks like jade and in some pictures this looks like icon. So it's one or the other. Okay, so Alice in Snow White. So there you see I'm working on page two. I had finished page one last time you saw it. I'm stitching this on, and this is huge. I'm stitching this on a 16 count platinum by Picture This Plus. And the only reason it's on 16 count is because when I bought fabric, it was during lockdowns and fabric was hard to come by. And 16 count was the only thing large enough they had that I could do this on. So that was fun. I enjoyed working on that. And the next one is a favorite of everyone's. And I actually, when I was pressing Stevie Ray, I pressed the top of this to take out the lines so you can see this. Let me see if I can back up. And here we are with the whole piece. All right, so I reached the bottom. Let me come in closer and show you some of the details. Look at that face. I love that face. And then that nest, those eggs use so many colors but it wasn't the eggs, but the nest around the eggs that just took me forever. I'm glad that part's done. So you can see I've reached the bottom of the design now and I'm filling in, there's two rows of pages here. So I did a little bit of this page the last time up here and then the bottom page is from here down. So that's only a partial. So I'm working these two together and working my way across. And that's where that is. So you can see, I'm gonna put the picture in again of what this should look like. And then you can see the wind kind of fades off into the forest. And so you've got this faded area, which the shading is just beautiful. I made one mistake. I don't know if this phone will pick this up. So there was one evening is that where? Yeah, that's where, right in through here. There was one evening I was tired, but I hadn't been able to stitch the day before. So I hadn't stitched it all on Thanksgiving. And so it was the day after Thanksgiving. And that evening I was tired. I'd been up early for a couple of days and, but I wanted to stitch. So I highlighted a symbol. I was working down here and right in here is where it starts. And I, I looked at my pattern keeper and it said, you know, 924. And I kept thinking, that is so pixelated. What is wrong with that? Nothing else in this design is pixelated. And after putting over 200 stitches in, I looked again at pattern keeper because this just did not look right. And it wasn't 924, it was 934. So I have to pick out just over 200 of these stitches and restitch it. And at that point I was disgusted and the next time I picked it up, I only worked in this wing. So that's that. The next one I picked up because I just wanted some, I wanted to work on this. It was calling to me was you can leave your hat on. The artist is Sandra's. Oh, um, I am not with it today. Maybe I need to do this more often. <laughs> All right. So 
nerve this is by unconventional X stitch and it's being stitched on a 20 count white Ada by Zweigart. There we go. Now we've got, you can leave your hat on. So the app, the artist is Sandra Santara. This is charted by Hade. Have an earth design. I'm stitching this on 18 count white Zweigart. And I'm work, I was working on finishing up page one. So I started down here and filled this in and filled in a little bit here. Then I went up here and filled this in. And then this here column is all page two. So you can see this is page one is almost done. And that was so fun. These dark blue colors, they blended so nicely. And then these neutrals going on it, it it's just, it's a beautiful design. So that was a lot of fun. Okay, and that was my stitching for November. So I did, not counting the dragonfly, because I don't count those stitches. If you're curious, I did 22,484 stitches this month. But now I have purchases. And the first one is Luna. I'm going to put a picture in here. This is by Hemlock and Rye, which is Julie on Flosstube. Her channel is Kansas City Girl at a Colorado World. And I just, when I, she showed this, I immediately stopped the video and went and bought it. I rarely ever do that. I'll write down something and I'll think about it for a while, but I knew I needed this one. So I haven't started it yet, but I have it. The other one I have is something I've tried purchasing a few times. Um, I bought it this summer and the company I bought it from said they had it in stock. And then about two weeks went by and I get a notification that, sorry, we don't have this and we don't think we can get it. Okay, so for whatever reason, I just typed in this at Amazon and it came up. And I got Night and Day Fairies. So this one's called Butterfly Fairies. And this is by Leisure Arts. And I thought the original was by Lenarte, but it could have been by Leisure Arts. There's another picture of the Night Fairy. And on the back of this, the price is $6.95 in the U.S. And yet they're charging just under $12 on Amazon. But I checked two days ago and this was still available. So if you really want this, like I said, both charts are in here and you can get this on Amazon. So that was, those are my purchases. So plans. Okay. Um, I'm doing this by week. Normally I have goals. I have stitch count goals for my full coverage pieces. So I'll either want to finish the page or I'll want, you know, 4,000 stitches or Stevie Ray, I needed 11,000 stitches. But this month I'm extremely busy with Christmas and I don't want to put that pressure on myself. I seriously thought about working on Nerthus until she was done. But there's almost 18,000 stitches there. And could I do 18,000 in a month? Well, yeah, I could because I did more than that this month. But I'll have less stitching days and stitching time in December than I did last month. I also want to enjoy every stitch of Nerthus because I truly enjoy stitching on her. She's just, the design is beautiful. The charting is amazing. And... I want to enjoy her. So I'm not going to push through for a finish because I don't want to put that stress on myself in a month that is just hectic as it is. So what I've decided to do is I'm not even going to count, you know, how many days I'm not going to say, I want to get nine days in this or four days in this. I'm going to do by weeks and I've picked four projects and then I have a new start at the end of the month. So let me give you that Whatever I get done, I get done. If something is finished before the week is out, I will finish out that week using Nerthus. So let's start. The first one is this week because there's not a lot of time left. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow night I have my grandchildren because their parents have a Christmas party and so I'm gonna keep them overnight. So I won't get stitching in tomorrow night and then I'll have some time Saturday. So I'm pulling out the dragonfly because all I have is this top wing and I think I might be able to finish this in the time I have left. 
And that would be wonderful to get that off my web list. So that's this week. Next week, I'm bringing out End of Forest Grove. So I have the entire top done. I'm missing a little bit over here. I don't have the quotes in because I'm re-quoting, re -quoting. I'm recharting uh, my own quotes for both this one and this one down here. I've brought it all the way down and I've made sure that this is the bottom stitch was where it was supposed to be, counted across that everything fit. It does. So I'm gonna pick that up next. So here's where that is. And let's see here. Okay, so you can see, I can almost see the whole thing. All right, so here we go across. All right, and then the bottom half, you can see there's a little bit right here that needs to be finished, it needs to go in there. And then I have to come across. So this is the very bottom, this is page 14. And you can see I'm just gonna work my way back that way to the tree. And then when all the trees are in, then I'll go in and put the quotes in. I've already selected the quotes I'm going to use, so it's just a matter of charting them and stitching them. This is on a 18 count picture this plus and the color well at least on my phone here looks accurate this is alchemy and I love this color I would definitely use this again for another project okay week three of December is the week I think I'm going to have the most stitching time so the project with the most stitches is Nerthus so I'm going to come back down here and I'm gonna start by pulling out those stitches and restitching those and then work my way across and see how far I can get this month. So that will be week three. The fourth week, I'm pulling out Dahlia. And this is by Donna Cooler Designs. Uh, it's a, I, I have it out of this book. It was a gift to me for Christmas one year. But you can buy this on Donna Cooler Designs website. Um, I believe it's $9.95 normal pricing. And I believe I was told that everything on that site works in Pattern Keeper. There's a lot of back stitch, so of course that won't work in Pattern Keeper. And here's where this is now. So you can see I still have to finish, I'm working this page by page. And I have to finish this butterfly and then do all the back stitching in that bottom page. There's a little bit more that has to be done in these leaves. And then I have three more pages. The largest page is this one here. You can see the difference. I mean, this is page five right here. And that's all there was was that little section. So this is on an 18 count piece that was white Zweigart that I dyed in um in teal the liquid writ and i am using the friction pens here i don't know if you can see the gritting simply because there's so many yellows in here and they're so close in shade that it's very very hard to follow what's done and what isn't done when i put it down for a while so those are the whips i'm going to work on and then my new start is this this is one for sorrow by stephanie Poi Moon Law, and the design is 350 by 349, so it'll be a nice square piece, and it's not overly large. So in addition to all those, I have to finish my grandson's quilt. I'll take pictures of it and show it to you in January, but I want to be able to give that to him on Christmas, so I don't have a lot of time to do that. And then, let's see what else to, oh, January. I hope you'll come back in January. I have a big January. In January, I'm going to show you all my 2021 finishes. There's not a lot, I think I have 10, so it won't take that long to show you. And then I'm going to introduce the pieces that I'm going to start. And with my birthday start, there's going to be a total of eight starts by the end of January. I decided to participate in 20, 22 in 2022. 
This is the brainchild of Debbie of Creatively Yours. And her theory is she has more than 22 whips and she wants to bring it down to a manageable number, get some finishes, and then as she finishes pieces, she'll bring in more of her other whips. And that way, I have a fly in here that, okay, so that way she will always have 22 whips throughout the year. And I thought, wow, that would be really cool. And I started thinking about how I stitch because I know where I want to put something. When I see a design, I immediately go, oh, I want to have that. And I want to put it on this wall or I want to do it here, put it here. And so there's always that goal of finishing it so I can hang it up. And then there's always the, I've got these designs waiting and I know where I want to put them. So if I hurry up, I can start them. And sometimes like the end of this month, that can put some pressure on to finish a piece. So I've picked out three pieces that I'm going to focus on for the year. They're going to get the most time each month and they'll be worked on every month. And then I'm going to start because I currently have 14 projects left. So I'm going to start eight projects to bring my total up to 22. And then I'm just gonna rotate through those every month, just constantly work through them and then restart and work through them. I think I'm going to use a, a roulette wheel a decision maker to pick what I'm going to work on. And I think this way, yes, I'll be seeing progress on, good progress on at least three pieces, but I'll be able to start working on those other ones that I really want to touch. We'll see. Now, will I keep bringing in new pieces to maintain 22 like Debbie will do? As I finish things, I don't know because that's not my normal way of stitching. But this is an experiment that I want to try. I want to see how this feels to do this. So those are my plans. And the only thing I have left is to tell you my floss tuber of the month. And that is... Uh, Lauren from Flossibilities and Lauren is she's this year she is working on three cross stitch pieces that are full coverage and the artist is Chris Dunn. She's finished one she has two more to finish and then she has all the starts planned for next year and they're not all full coverage. Lauren is she's a joy to listen to her voice is very soothing and I look forward to she to her videos. She only films once a month at, on or about the first, as I do. So I hope you'll check her out and keep coming back and see more of hers. So that will be it for me. I hope you all have a wonderful December. If you celebrate Christmas or one of the other holidays, I hope you have a good time. Tell me below, what do you celebrate? And also, while you're at it, let me know. Do you think I'm crazy to start eight full coverage pieces next year? You take care. I will see you soon. Goodbye.